everybody, so welcome to Carbonite Bounty BS, the podcast where we talk about a Mandalorian on Disney Plus. I'm Scott. And I'm Sam. It's Tony. Ken, and that's Ken and Tony, Ken and Tony. And <laughs> we got a little delay on the Skype, and that's all right. So we're here to talk about Chapter 3. That is The Sin. We're going to talk about Chapter 3, The Sin. And I really like this one a lot. Uh, I thought it was a really awesome episode. Uh, showcased a lot of the stuff The Mandalorian does really, really well. Um, real quick, real quick, let's just tell you our favorite thing about the episode, and I'll go first, because I'm the one that's controlling who goes first. Talking. I have the talking stick, uh, so I'll go first. So, <laughs> my favorite part of this entire episode, um, is definitely when he uses the, the singing birds. That's my favorite part, because you know it's going to come, right? You know he's going to use it. They, you, you get the Chekhov's gun in this one, and you know it's going to happen. Uh, so that was my favorite part. Sam, what was your favorite part? Well, I, I have to say that, um, you know, the jetpack and Mandalorian is come, you know, coming and saving, you know, Mando at the end there. Um, I did not expect that. That was and the just see the, you know, just see them up in the air and everything, just you know, taking, kicking ass and taping, yeah. taking names. I mean, that was an awesome thing to see. It really, at the really end. was, really was. What about you, Ken? What was your favorite thing about this episode? My favorite scene: flamethrower, yeah, stormtrooper. <laughs> Uh-huh. Best scene, most uh, experience on awesome. TV. Cathartic. It was great. Always wanted to paint A lot of people trooper. did that stuff in their backyard, too, so don't forget that. Uh, seeing it in real life is pretty neat. Tony, Tony, what was your favorite part of the episode? Um, aside from everything we talked about, of course, the new line of the week. Is <laughs> the Just hearing the Mandalorians you know, interact with each other. Uh, getting to a little bit of background about their warrior yeah. ways. I mean, that was just the line of the week. I just can't stop saying it. So yeah, over this, and over and over again. This is the way. Um, it's yeah. definitely something you're going to hear when someone lets you merge into traffic within the next year. So just just be aware mm-hmm. that's going to happen. <laughs> you're going to. This is the way. They had like they actually had like two back to backs. They have. Yeah. I have spoken. You know, and you know, this is the way this week and everything. Man, I mean. They're just coming. They're just coming with they, they it. They really are. They're bringing know? it, and they're bringing it with you know uh, a really great blend of um, a lot of really neat Western tropes and the Star Wars universe, which has always been Westerny. Um, so super nifty. I, I want to say you know part of the the action of this of this episode is the turning in of the kid, right? The turning in of the kid and yeah. the, the child. The child. The kid. Uh, <laughs> baby Y, as we called him last week before they gave him a name. Uh, Mini Yoda, as some people who are intentionally raising Tony's ire might say. <laughs> no, don't not do raise that. Tony's ire, people. Uh, so, uh-huh. so I, w- I want to talk uh, just a second about how upset that kid looked. And <laughs> how sad he looked. He was like, oh, man. Like you're doing what? Where are you taking me? <laughs> oh, come on! That that kid is that that kid is yeah. smart, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was really neat. I thought the way that they've designed him, uh, very, very emotive. Um, I just thought that was really cool. Quick, yeah. Quick question. Okay, so um, how do years go in Star Wars? <laughs> how does time go? You know, is it? Okay, we, we know he's like yeah. about 50 years old, but how does time exactly go in the Star Wars universe? Is it 365 uh, days? I believe yes. I have the answer yes. to that. I believe. Yes! And it goes through all the books and all the expanded universe, is they go by a Coruscant year. That is an official year in this galaxy far, far away. I might be wrong, but I'm almost positive I'm correct on that. Okay. That's what they go by. Is a what year on Coruscant? It's is it year. 65 days by Pretty sure. coincidence? Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, you know. Uh, I, I, we did a we did a supplemental nerdendum episode on the EU um, a while ago with my buddy Justin, who's a friend of the podcast and a member of the Nerd Cycle family. And one of the things about the EU is that there's always contrivances like that. There's always little things like that in the EU. Uh, it's something I kind of miss, but I don't kind of miss because this is. Uh, this is better. Sorry, that's better. I've I've said it. I've made my decision. Getting a show like The Mandalorian means that I'm okay with the EU being gone now, because Lucas was never going to make a show like this. He would have made it, and I the kid would have been not. really annoying. 
Like you can imagine George Lucas making this show and everybody hating the the kid, everyone hating the baby baby Yoda, right? Everyone hating it. Uh, you get you got you guys give George Lucas <laughs> such a bad rap for the person that created this whole universe. <laughs> Oh man! Well, he made, he made, he did Jar Jar, so that's the whole problem. Is is know? that where it went downhill, Tony? I think it's where it is. is this is the antithesis of Jar, like you know, it's oh, gone, yeah. gone completely viral, which I'm going to go into in a second. But okay, just well, let's, up well, let's media. transition there because you know the kid, the kid looking upset, the kid uh, in his in his uh, you know pod. You know, this is a big a big cultural thing right now, Tony. And and, and you know, I, I know you. We talked a little a little earlier about how you had done some research into, uh, you know, uh, the species of, of Yoda and and this baby. Mm-hmm. I know you had some some stuff you wanted to say about it, so I wanted to kind of give you the opportunity to say your piece. Okay. Well, first of all, now I'm going to forgive, you know, people that are very casual Star Wars. There are a lot of people that don't even watch The Mandalorian. If you go anywhere uh-huh. in social media. Baby Y, let's just use that term for now, is just blowing it up. It's everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Now, again, I'm going to forgive those that are not even watching it, but here's the thing. If you're even watching it a little bit, it's not Yoda. Can we please stop saying it? It's <laughs> not him. It's not Baby Yoda. Now, when we say, okay, Baby Y, Baby Yoda, Nerd Cyclopedia. we really think, oh, wasn't Yoda cute as a baby? It's not right. Yoda. Okay. So let's let's leave that go right there. Yoda died in Return of the Jedi. Yes, I understand. You know, he's one with the Force. He's a Force ghost, but his physical being ceased to exist in Return of the Jedi. So it's not Yoda. Okay. And this and the Mandalorian takes place after after, Return after, of the Jedi. Okay. after which has already been determined whenever he was getting payment from um I can't remember his name now, who is um, none of these people have names, anyway, really. None of these people have names, people. and and nobody says like you're oh, moth spectacular. Like what are you doing here? You know what I mean? Like that doesn't right, happen. Right. <laughs> but anyway, when he gets getting payment and says no, not Werner Herzog. We can just call him Werner Herzog. Very old dad, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we know it's after Return of the Jedi. Okay. So the interesting thing again, which I stated, it's never been officially told what species Yoda is from. Now they really don't say it in the movies. But, like, for example, in Star Wars, Greedo, we never heard the name. Well, we heard the name Greedo, but it was on the little toys, so we kind of knew about it. He's a Rodian. Mm -hmm. It's been in the expanded universe. Everybody knows that. Nobody knows what species Yoda is. It's never been stated. We don't know who his home planet is. Now, I just read, and it was very briefly, in The Phantom Madness, there was another one from that species. I believe it's a female. Her name is Yaddle, was on the Jedi Council. So, brief second, look at now I'm going to have to watch a Phantom Menace all over again. But anyway, it's there. <laughs> but again, never really stated. So we don't know. What I love about this is we really don't know. Do There's been a lot of theories of Baby Y and who this is and what the connection is. Obviously, there's got to be some. Is the entire feces, uh, species Force-sensitive? Oh, the connection species there? out we there. We really don't know. But I, that's what I love about it is... Um, hopefully we're going to find out, but right now we really don't know. And, and let's and let's just real quick, uh, you know, I don't mean to hijack your situation here, but let's transition over. I made a little bit mm-hmm. of a, a infographic for us for the kid. <laughs> that you guys can take a gander at now for us here. So we know that the kid is force sensitive, Tony. And why do we know the kid is force sensitive? Right. All right. We have. Wow, you made a great graph. Or a nice little. List. My favorite yes. is the is the super. Um, sleep. That's my favorite force power is. I like, I like the like super sleep too. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, I'm sorry. I just wanted to show off my infographic because mm-hmm. I am pretty, pretty vain. <laughs> very, 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 very good, Scott. We're proud <laughs> right, of you, I did buddy. something right for once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, Tony. Uh, anything else about? You know, one of the things I, I want to say here uh, in this piece is that they always would tease info like this in the expanded universe books, right? They always be like, oh, well, maybe we'll discover the secret of Master Yoda or, you know, maybe we'll find out what happened in between, um, you know, the trilogies. Maybe we'll find some of that stuff out. And uh, it was always their big gimmick, like, oh, buy the next book and maybe you'll know. Uh, a great selling mm-hmm. tactic worked on me a lot. So, you know, if uh, there's a sucker born every minute, I'm a sucker for that. Uh, awesome. 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 Uh, thanks, Tony, for looking all that, that stuff for us. Um, you know, I think that. 
one of the coolest things about this show is how they're doing direct references to westerns and that's probably my favorite thing about the show and i'll just say this th there's a couple really really neat direct scenes here uh and some really direct references um carl weathers character here grief the bounty hunter uh boss for lack of a better term he does this this amazing thing where he takes you know he's got a couple bars of beskar steel and he kind of puts it in his uh in his pocket in like his vest pocket and it's this really great foreshadowing to a moment at the end of the episode where he gets shot and the beskar steel blocks the blaster bolt and saves his life right now right, you know right, right, this right. is a this is a scene from a clint eastwood movie that's in back to the future part three or part two which uh, i'm a i'm a huge back to the future nerd it, it was we did a bit where yeah, i had time travel right, i don't really right. hate time travel i love these movies uh and you know he's got the steel plate on his chest and biff's like he's a genius he's a genius anyway sports bit <laughs> so that's one of the coolest things about it i think the music is very is very western right <clears throat> When we get we get the flutes yes, and the is. that come in like a tumbleweed, you know, it, it feels like a horse. Yeah. Like it feels like you're riding a horse, right? The beat you get. As as soon as soon as the title comes up, you know, Mandalorian, and then the title with the episode and everything, you get that westernish, you know, type um, um music cues and everything that comes in that makes it really really um um drive the whole western point down home. And then the and the scone, Sam, did you notice like all the little paintings for lack of oh, a better yeah. term at the end yes yes know. i mean every yes, single one yes, little yes. stills that are done yeah that's yeah. the one that reminds me the most cool. yeah yeah, yeah. very cool. well done uh, well done yeah very um the good the bad and the ugly the uh the montage they mm -hmm. do at the beginning at film yep. very very much uh um very much like that definitely very cool you know how they uh how they kind of handled that uh, i want to talk a little bit also about how uh, the Mandalorian is the man with no name. He is essentially a Clint Eastwood character, uh, for lack of a better term. He is silent. He doesn't talk. He speaks with his blasters. He has a code of ethics that he is not interested in violating. He will violate his word to the Bounty Hunter's Guild code to save the kid. And when you look at the deadly effectiveness of the Mandalorian warrior here on display, I mean, just take a, take a peek at the body count this week. Mando... Mando gets himself equipped with the kid plus one. He kills 14 <laughs> stormtroopers, including a scorpion from Mortal Kombat-esque get over here vibroblade stab and a four, a four person one shot kill off the whispering birds. And then personally dispatches 12 more bounty hunters in a firefight. Uh, this guy is ridiculous. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He um, he's a he got he has a six shooter. <laughs> got a bunch of them, you know. He does it. He, he he does his thing, you know. And I'll say this: when um, he this whole protecting the kid, this whole it's a trope. It's a Western trope, right? The escort mission. Uh, so I I definitely enjoyed that stuff for sure. I I thought that was really really nifty. Um, what did you guys think about the scene where, um, what did you guys think about the scene where? The Mandalorian shuts uh, Mando shuts down his engines. What did you guys all think when he did that? What was what was Ken? What was your reaction to him shutting down the engines? Uh, well, he just when he when he had his change of heart to go back and get yeah. the baby, wow. and just that he started everything up, and it was all very Millennium Falcon ish, right? Mm -hmm. Flipped all the switches. And then he, he was like, "No, nah, do this. I gotta get. I gotta get him. I gotta save this kid. Shut him down." So, mm -hmm. uh, very deliberate, um, sure. I guess. And just it really made you feel that there was this conflict inside of him. Like everybody in Star Wars has a conflict, one way or the other. And this was his conflict, his guild, you know, keeping with the guild and what his job was, and now he's gonna like go against that completely. And go save this kid for well, whatever. Real, he already had like an attachment. He, he already had right. attachment, and then when the um at the beginning, and there's another foreshadow when um mm -hmm. baby Y, yeah. <laughs> the kid, the child, you know, um <clears throat> was playing with the 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 knob of the um oh. you know the control and everything. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah you know. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. We know, we know exactly how that goes. So, um, by the time he got back to the ship without mm -hmm. the child, 
um, you know, he was flipping all the switches and everything. It got to the lever and found that, okay, the, it's not there. It's like, man, it was like, wow, okay. And the, his motions and the way, whoever's in that suit, I don't know if it's Pedro Pascal, you know, the, guy, the voice at least that's, you know, Mando. But um, whoever's playing him in that suit is doing a really great job, you know, emitting emotions through a, a helmet, <laughs> you know, and body motion and everything. Um, we knew that he was about to head back to go save that uh, child. Tony, what did anybody cheer? Did you cheer when you saw that when that happened? Or because or, I'll tell you, I cheered for sure. Um. Another thing, and uh, I mean, what it's going at is looking at it's just that. Well, the Mandalorian are uh, human species, so just raw motion just got really, you know, just really sort of like baby Y, you know, really got attached. Sure. It's probably where it's going to go. But I was thinking this, thinking this a little bit. The Mandalorian are warrior species. What if he realized, well, wait a minute. I've turned him in. Baby Y is very valuable. Maybe if I take him... I can get something more. We never really thought about that. That I think ah. it might just be, ah. I'm a, you know, I have a faction, ah. but it might, might be something more than that. Ah. Um, because that was the other thing that I wanted to say is that it all started from, we didn't know at the time, but, you know, Boba Fett is Mandalorian, and that's where all this comes through. And they never right. used the word Mandalorian ever. And even in the, you know, the Clone Wars, it was never really brought, but that's all oh, from yes. the expanded universe. That's where that term came out. The planet Mandalore, mm -hmm. the warrior uh, nature of the, you know, everybody there. So that's interesting. The fact that, you know, they're starting to use expanded universe stuff. Oh, so, so all this is derived, the whole term Mandalorian is derived from the expanded universe. So you're basically yes. saying it was never used in any no. canon Star Wars, you know, um, stuff that wasn't a part of the expanded universe. Exactly. Wow. We okay. never knew it was never well, and never even um, there was never the term Mandalorian or Mandalore, even like in the Clone Wars, mm. uh, or you know, like Attack of the Clones, shall I say? It was never even there. It's all from the expanded universe. So they finally, you know, admit, okay, this is like the you know the term for this warrior group of people. They're from the planet Mandalore. So I'm liking that that they're bringing stuff in, but they're doing it. To the new canon, so that's actually really, really interesting yeah. how they're doing. And the Mandalorians are awesome. are a very rich history. They're a warrior, uh, a warrior planet. Uh, they're nice. active even all the way back into the old Republic days. I've played, you know, I played through Django Fett Bounty Hunter on GameCube. Wow, why am I thinking about that game right mm. now? Wow, good, good game. Woo! Some of the good lore game. was in there. Uh, I think that specifically the Mandalorians were also a part of the force that threw back. The Yuzun Vong invasion from the other galaxy that they came from, which uh, just to show you where the EU went over time. But Tony, to your point, it is wow. interesting to see them using elements from the EU when we heard that they were discarded. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a re-retro retconning <laughs> of, of the EU, right? So it's pretty nifty. I guess they yeah, have probably they're just taking characters, situations, yeah. and then just putting it into the new canon. You know right. where they see fit, but it's Speaking interesting. Of that, now, Sam, I know, I know, we talked a little off off mic about how, you know, your thoughts on what they should do with this. Like, so, what do you think Disney ought to do with uh, with their Star Wars franchise moving forward? Well, I mean, there's some you know rumors out there with with Disney, especially that they weren't really they they extended on uh, Kathleen Kennedy's contract last year, like around last September, um, for another three years. So um, during that time, you know, they had the success with uh, the Last Jedi, you know, that was successful, but they had the big drop with. Um, uh, the solo come out this year? No, it came out last year. Last year. Right? Okay. A time, a time I remember. Twenty eighteen. Well. Okay. Well, okay. So uh, let me back up there. So they extended her contract after you know Solo came out, but they're still not happy with a lot of the directions, you know, that she's taken with the franchise, and they're pretty much at a crossroads um, as far as what they're going to do with you know the main you know movie franchise and everything. Now this whole Mandalorian, you know, Disney Plus, you know, um, they really hyped up. The whole Star Wars, you know, Mandalorian thing is really going to be, and it's really driving, 
you know, a lot of subscribers to subscribe to this thing. In fact, some people are subscribing to this only to see the, the Mandalorian as far as Disney+. Well, Plus. I wonder who that is. <laughs> now, if they didn't but, own the rest of Star know, Wars they're, too, they're, Tony, you might be right uh, for me. But they do own the rest <laughs> of Star Wars and Marvel. So True. what can you say? It, it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, if they didn't have, I'm, I'm a big Marvel head and everything. If they didn't have that, you know, I probably wouldn't be on this, you know, as much as it was. But I really wanted to see the Mandalorian, so, you know, see how that, you know, turned out. But Kathleen Kennedy is rumored to be like on her last, you know, last days because her contract ends into like 2021. And they're talking about maybe even um, bringing on um, John Favreau as like a head or, you know, Kevin Feige, but his, his plate is full, you know, with the Marvel stuff. So I'm thinking more John Favreau since they had this success with the Mandalorian so far. I mean, the numbers on this are really, really solid as far as like, um, you know, the, the viewership as far as like the Mandalorian and everything. So, and the direction that, you know, that they're taking with this TV or with the, with the streaming show, um, they're going to try to like, you know, integrate it a little bit with, you know, the mainstream canon. I don't know how much so, but it's giving them like, you know, ideas and everything on how to, um, maybe duplicate what they're doing with Marvel. Disney. Absolutely. And I'll tell you this, if Jean Favreau is doing, bringing back the Westernishness to star Wars that dropped off a little bit after the first one is is a big deal for the world building because of the vastness and because of the amount of different stories you can tell uh i think that's for sure um yeah i discussed with tony like a while back um you know you got so much of that eu lore and you know content and everything that's not even really being explored um i didn't even know that like like, like i said before the mandalorian was the more more that you know extending universe stuff so it would be really great for them to bring a lot of that back in, which is what they're looking like they're doing. You know, thank goodness for John Favreau's direction with this. Um, if he can take on, like, you know, managing the movie side of it, too, I think that will be a really good um, boom for, you know, the franchise. I think one of the cool things about uh, about how they've been doing Marvel that I really hope they do bring to Star Wars is that interconnectedness, right? And we talked, because the four of us did a review of um, Last Jedi, couple years ago uh and we talked about um han solo's dice right we talked about han solo's dice Uh, and we talked about how they tried to make that a thing do you think that they're going to try to make anything from the mandalorian a thing in episode nine i'm honestly asking do you think they have any plans here sam Uh, not necessarily because it just episode nine takes a and they uh, the the time between episode nine and the um, Mandalorian, how big of a time span is that? Years. I can't really Maybe see them um, really integrating unless they do some major, <laughs> you know, by the time this series ends uh, or the, this you know the season ends, and I think it's going to end before um, Rise of the Skywalker comes. Rise of Skywalker comes out, right? It's real close. Yeah, that could, it's because it because eight episodes. So by the time Rise of Skywalker comes out, Mandalorian should you know should already have been comes um, out what, done. 11, 20, Tony. It's, uh, or, sorry, 12, eleven. 20. Yeah, twelve twenty. Twelve. Twelve twenty. Twelve seventeen. Sorry. Yeah. Jealous of future me. <laughs> oh, I hope you exist, and we got to see that movie. All right. So, <laughs> so it's probably it's probably like a week. But I, I can't really see them, um, like I said, unless something major happens within the, um, the Mandalorian show, I can't really see them in trying to integrate that, you know, in the um, actual movie itself. At least not at this point. You know, it's, it's probably just too early for them to start interconnecting stuff. Well, in my opinion, it's never too early to do that. You know, we do a show, Sam and I do a show on uh, HBO property called Watchmen, where they have been interconnecting things <laughs> rather to rather great effect lately. So I'm not going to throw out the... Uh, Oh well, well, if it's ah. well done, as 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 we know, some people can actually do it. Then hey, you know, all it's all. Uh, hey, true, I'm right? all for we, it. But do you really <laughs> trust the people that created Jar Jar Binks to handle nuance? I don't. I don't know if I do. Uh, and it's good that they turned it over to Disney because Disney seems to have fewer uh, qualms uh, dealing with stuff like that. Uh, I want to talk about another scene now, and that is the the bounty hunter uh, the bounty hunter ambush scene here. Uh, at, at the oh, end man. of this episode, great scene, great I want to scene. talk about 
about kind of how how it starts and that scene i love that scene where all the trackers go live all at once right uh i think that's so so cool it's such a way to just tell you exactly what's happening without having to say a word uh one of my favorite right. things and then there's this gunfight where bando threatens a, dro- a droid like he's a livery driver <laughs> <laughs> like he's a stagecoach driver, you know? And then we have the um, the aforementioned rescue of the Mandalorians, and uh, this is the way, right? Um, those guys came in on jetpacks, and we had this really cool... Uh, you know, we had this really cool situation where Mando said, I gotta get one of those, pretty much, right? And Ken, I know we talked that that was... You had some stuff you wanted to talk about about the jetpacks, right? Yes. Uh, the jetpacks. I did a little bit of uh, research um, myself yes. personally. Um, ever since even the scenes in Return of the Jedi where, where used the jetpack, I thought that was like the coolest mm-hmm. accessory. Um, aside from having a good blaster, but having a jetpack because a dimension in fighting. A third dimension. So you have, if you will, third dimension. So you have vertical and you have horizontal diagonal trajectories and and fighting capability which because the mandalorians are incredible oh. warriors need to protect themselves generally work alone they need to have as much uh choices and and options as possible so the jetpack um otherwise known oh. as a z jetpack uh has the ability of giving the individual like i said um <laughs> vertical and diagonal uh capability in, in in fighting so it gives them a little bit of edge on their on their uh on their adversaries but 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 it has a weakness if you hit it right it explodes <laughs> <laughs> so it's really it's a really great weapon technically very cool um there's no buttons it uh, just works right there's Maybe something on a on a wristband that ignites it, and then it just goes, it just launches. But if someone happens to strike it very lightly with a stick, forget especially, it. Especially, especially if that someone really? is a Jedi and, wow. and you're in danger of falling into the Sarlacc pit. Um, especially, especially when the Force is guiding something. Right? Um, we all know it's on Solo, right? Right. Or, or if you accidentally turn around and you hit it with the back of a. Uh, um, what did the uh, what did Han a hit Boba Fett with the, the the jetpack? Yeah, it was just a virus that clunk not <laughs> into the. He was gone. So yeah. good, good weapon, great tool, great piece of equipment. But it, it's, <laughs> it it's can be glitchy. a little bit glitchy for sure, right? A little wonky. You know. But I love this scene where they all launched up in the air. It was like yeah. uh, fireworks going off. Right. It's just a. That was a, awesome. a, a beautiful shot, and I started to cry actually because I thought it was just, just fantastic. Well done, and just what what the what the uh, fans what? would uh, eat up there. If, if 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 that was a network show, you wouldn't have gotten the special effects as great as what it was in that. I mean, it looked right. really good coming down. Yeah, heck no. If that was a regular network show, they wouldn't. They wouldn't even have done it. <laughs> yeah. Not in a budget. It would have got down to that, that, uh, at that shootout, and it would have been like, I'll make you a deal. I'm going to walk out with the kid. And they just would have been like, okay. That was how it would end. Uh, my favorite, and, and this uh, talking to Sam's point about the integration here, my favorite uh, rocket pack scene was when they did the, the rocketeer tie-in, and they had the guy fly and do the salute and then fly off. That was my favorite part. So that, there's some uh, corporate synergy for you there on the behalf of Disney. Um Wait, I had a one yeah. one thing I just thought of. So, could one of those other Mandalorian could one of them be sure, Boba not? Fett? I don't know. And Whoa. would we would we think that maybe maybe not the big Hulk Hulk because Boba Fett wasn't really that big, but there were some other medium build ones like Mando, uh, which I think I think they want us to believe that mm-hmm. Boba Fett's there somewhere. 
It could be. Vikings, like, do you see the one scene where they were panning, you know, all the different Mandalorians? And then the one, do you remember in Return of the Jedi when um, Boba's in Jabba's palace and he has this kind of like antenna sticking out? Yes. One of them had that, which was interesting. It's like, so it makes you think. And in the expanded universe, going back to that, Boba Fett survived yes. the Star yes. Because think about it. He's yes. in armor. How could he really have been digested? He's Call- in full armor. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. But it was never done in the official canon. But this could be another way of tying it in. It's like, you know, we that's what I love about it. We don't know really what's coming next. It could. Um, and and, and one thing that's cool out. about that, because uh, Tony is right, uh, Boba Fett crawled his way out of the Sarlacc pit in the EU, and he became like the head chieftain of the Mandalorians because he's he's Boba Fett. I mean, he's Boba Fett. He's crazy awesome. Like, why yeah. wouldn't you want him to be in charge if you're these guys? So one thing, you know, talking to Tony about the EU stuff and thinking about, you know, how much of that are they going to pull in? How much of that canon we're talking about now, the plot canon, with Boba Fett crawling out, of the, crawling out of the Sarlacc pit and coming back to be in charge of, you know, the Mandalorian response to the invasion, the Empire and everything. How much of that do you think they'll pull in? Do you think that's something that's on the table or do you think they'll discard that? I don't know if they're going to do that exactly, but I think there's going to be a lot more times. Um, just completely just off subject, like in the um, Rebel series, uh, mm-hmm. Grandmaster Thrawn yes. is back. But completely different. Not the way he is in the expanding universe. It's just the character, but in a completely yeah. different situation. So I think they're going to do a lot. I don't know about this specific, you know, scenario, but uh, I think for, it's for those of you that are not EU literate, Grand Admiral Thrawn is a character who's a genius. Uh, awesome. Red eyes, blue. You know, he's he's cold blooded and he's brilliant, and he's so smart that you have to write the endings of his books first. That's how smart he is. So uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> real awesome. A lot of outside the box sort of naval combat. He does what he takes over the imperial, uh, the imperial fleet under construction by using mining robots or something. It's just like bizarre. So he does a lot of off the wall stuff. I do hope they bring him in because he is uh, quite a uh, uh, quite an interesting character. Um, super nifty. Are you guys excited that uh, Carl Weathers is still alive? Mendo. Uh, Mendo. Mendo. Let me tell you right now, Mendo. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I got this big <laughs> score. I want another job. But listen, why don't you go back to your trailer? Go why take a Go back to your trailer. Why don't you call up Craft Services? Why don't you get yourself some spice? And baby, you got a stew going. <laughs> and Mando's confused. He's like, that's <laughs> not what I want. That is not a, the way. <laughs> that is not the way. Yeah, listen, what if you just do a lot of drugs Give me another on your mission. ship? It's like, well, I could, what if I go get the kid? What if you do a lot of drugs? That's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so maybe maybe we'll also see the relationship between yeah. Yaddle and Yoda that created they, uh, as like mm. a flashback. That's the leading theory so far. Again, we don't know. I can't, you know, I can't wait to find out, but that's is, one of the leading that, theories. Is that your theory? All right, so here's, let's do this. Let's play a game. It's called Theory Crafting and making, it's called pulling it out of your ass. Uh, Tony, why don't you start? Where, <laughs> what do you think is, what's your best, this is all best guess, by the way. We're not talking about, what do you, where do you think they're going <laughs> with this, with the kid? What do you think is the genesis of the kid? I'm just going to say that it has, it's no relation to Yoda. I just think that, again, maybe this entire species is mm-hmm. Force-sensitive. And we've only seen two characters in the past, like, 35 <laughs> years. So this is a new one. I'm just going to go with that, that it's not, you know, Yoda's son or okay. anything like that. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm just going to go. I think I'd okay. like it to be that way. Just, you know, something completely different. A special to someone of the species. Not, not special, special. We yes. use that word here. Ken, what do you think? Special, yes. I mean, it'd be really great if they made it up. I, yeah, I think that there is going to be some relationship between Baby Y and and Yoda species. Uh, He, Baby Y, is far too powerful at this Mm -hmm. stage in his life, or her life, I'm not sure. Could be (laughs) a girl, who knows. In this stage of its life, it's far too powerful. And if you read about Yoda's youth, he was 
it was determined that he was something special and he was com- re- immediately removed from mm-hmm. wherever he was as whatever the the society was and he was put he sequestered into the fold of the jedi so he was the first jedi i think i don't think anyone really knew what this was before him so i think this kid is sought after there's a lot of bad people that know how how powerful he is and that's why he, he's he's bounty that's why everyone wants this kid so definitely this story is going to evolve and it's involved with it's going to evolve with mando and developing his story but it's also going to evolve with this character this baby y is going to be something special awesome awesome well, sam what do you think you do <laughs> all right kid. sam what do you think where do you think baby y is coming from where do you think they're going with this well, I mean, I'll, I'll pose a question back to you guys. What do you think was happening with, um, you know, what Persian was trying to do with um, Baby Y in there? Like, what was that machine? Um, what was he? What was he trying to do? And why didn't he? Why was he thinking that Mando was coming to kill the that. baby? I got some answers to that, and it all comes back into my theory, which is crazy, and that is that this is a clone of Yoda, and the, the, <laughs> the reason I think <laughs> that, and I didn't come up, I found this on the internet, but. Dr. Pershing is wearing the Kaminoan <laughs> Kamino cloner's sigil on his arm. And as we know, who has a very strong relationship with both the cloners of Kamino and the Mandalorians? Django and Boba Fett. Django Fett. So it makes sense for them to show up. Also, uh, to answer your question about why he thought <laughs> the Mandalorian was coming to kill the kid... Well, what would stop the Mandalorian from taking another contract to come kill the kid after taking the contract to bring the kid back? I mean, if you think about yeah. it logically, I mean, yeah. if this guy's right. a mercenary, yeah. there's money to be yeah. made. Yeah. Just to explain right. the terror to Sam, who apparently doesn't get scared by anything. He's a tough kid. Tough guy. <laughs> That's where my theory am, is. Like, we're just thinking, oh, he's such a nice guy. You know, he has such an attachment. To baby Y. Oh, he's going to save the day. That's kind of where I was thinking. It's like, you know what? I made the biggest um, bounty that I've ever had. Obviously, this kid, the child, the kid is very valuable. Why don't I just steal him again? I think maybe. (laughs) And get some more, you know, like, you know, Mandalorian steel. I I think maybe we're at a uh, a golden goose question here, right? How golden is this goose? And until Mando knows what's going on, he doesn't, you know, he's got to figure it out. So we'll see. If Tony's right, he'll be tempted pretty soon, right, Tony? So we'll see next episode huh, uh, yeah. if he's tempted by, do you know what this is worth? If you hear that sentence, kids, <laughs> that means Tony is 100% right, and he should do his Tony is right dance, which let's get a capture of the Tony is right dance right now, Tony. All right. All right. There you go. Back, back, right, and, forth, so that back is, and forth. That is episode three of The Sin, uh, The Mandalorian. Uh very, very good, good episode. episode. Good episode. A lot of firefights mm-hmm. and interesting development of characters. We even got more, a little bit more insight into the Mandalorian Coven, uh, and discovered some of the reasons. You know, the Empire flushed them out. That's why there's secrets. Uh, I think this is a really rich world. I'm excited to see where they're going to develop this. Uh, Lord knows they have enough money to 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 cash the check they're writing here. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they got enough subscribers, so, you know, let's just keep this, Speaking this train of subscribers going and, and a subscriber train. Mm-hmm. Now, Sam has brought something to my attention during this uh, this recording, and that is that we have subscribers, and <laughs> Sam, thank you so much thank for you guys. subscribing and is listening. Uh, Sam, why don't you tell the good folks where else they can find our offerings, other versions of our offerings, and then if you would... Let them know how they can reach us, if you could, please, for me. Make sure that you are going to NerdCyclopedia.com. Make sure that you're following off us all on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at NerdCyclopedia. Make sure that you're downloading our podcast on Apple Podcasts. We'll be on Stitcher soon. Uh, we are on Google Play right now. We are spreading out to Spotify, you know, soon enough here. So, um, you know, just be patient with us. Um the uh, the podcast is called Carbonite um, Bounty BS <laughs> Mandalorian Podcast. So make sure you Google that, and you know we're on there. 
Um, make sure that you're leaving us feedback at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Absolutely, as well. head there. Uh, you can also reach us at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com uh, for the feedback. And make sure if, if you don't subscribe to our other podcasts, please do so. Nerdcyclopedia, Nerdendum, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. And of course, nobody cares. The podcast nobody cares about. All right. <laughs> uh, nope. Last thoughts, last thoughts. So, my, my conclusion here is. Uh, I'm excited to see where they're going. I want to see more Western tropes, and I want to see more of this moral questioning that Tony's talking about. Sam, what are your final thoughts? Um, so I mean, we basically, you know, got like Mando and like you know Baby Y, who really doesn't say anything at all. <laughs> you know, he's really interacted with um, you know, the Carl Weathers character and um, the Nick Nolte character. I, I can't forget, I can't remember their names right now. They don't um, say like, "Hey, and, Bob, what are yeah, we they, going to do tomorrow?" <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, well, apparently if you read captions, yeah. which is sometimes what happens if I pause the um, you know, my Disney Plus, and all of a sudden I unpause it, all of a sudden the captions are coming up. I don't know what kind of glitch is that. But anyway, um, you know, you start getting like, you know, the the names of, you know, characters and stuff. Um, um I'm curious to see how he interacts with Excellent. other Excellent. characters. Ken, what are your final thoughts? I'm a big fan of okay. flashbacks. Uh so like develop the character. So now we have this this uh this character we're calling him Mando. That's what they're calling him. Uh but then we also see these flashbacks as to what created him and where he came from. So I hope they develop that a little bit uh, more, too. I want to see what made Mando awesome. who he is, which from what we've seen, it, uh, it's a lot of conflict and, and uh, actually a very horrible, traumatic thing happened to him. You know? Yeah, yeah. Parents, yeah. yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, I'm excited to see that, too. So that. Tony, how about you? What are your final thoughts on uh, this episode? Uh, final thoughts. I'm just looking to see where this goes into the, the big mm. world of Star Wars. Like, I'm interested to know about the guild. How did that form? Um, it's just like little lines. Like, you hear, like, when he said, well, all that's left of the Empire, right. there's just a few warlords. Well, obviously, there's all these stormtroopers. <laughs> work, so, you know, they're doing <laughs> something with some. So, I wanted to see the big thing. Like, yeah. who are these warlords? You know, what happened when the Empire fell? How is mm. this the the kid going to fall into all this? You know, there's something much much bigger. So I'm interested awesome, to see what awesome. that's going to be. And go. you know, like I said, you can check us out uh, if you're a subscriber of ours on the podcast world. Remember, we have a YouTube channel, Nerd Cyclopedia, spelled the way it sounds. Check us out there. And from all of us here at Nerd Cyclopedia Studios and Nerd Cyclopedia Transcontinental Podcasting, that's a it's a mouthful, but I picked it. I uh, want to say thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you soon with uh, episode four. Cool. Peace out. Subscribe. Make sure you guys subscribe. Else? And hey, reviews help. <laughs> Do some reviews. <laughs> All right, buddy. See you later. Nerd Cyclopedia.